Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how and why I set my deer rifles in the way that I do. Now I'm not saying that this is the only way or the best way to set in a deer rifle, but I'm going to explain to you why I do it this way and why it works for the application that I'm using it for. Like a hundred years ago, an article came out that said the average deer that was shot was a hundred yards. So somebody ran with that and just decided that everybody needs to sight their rifles in at a hundred yards for some reason. But I sight mine in at 25. Hold on. So there's a few things to note here. Um, the scope is actually above the barrel. If you didn't know that, usually the center of the scope is an inch and a half to two inches above the center of the barrel. So that means that the line of sight is above the path of the bullet and at some point those two cross and that's you know a zero i believe most manufacturers of ammo have a ballistic chart on their website at least remington does and i shoot 100 grain core locks um, out of my 243 so i just pulled up that ballistic chart for that um, i've been shooting for shoot I don't know 25 years or so and for the most part these numbers out of the guns and the ammo that I use have been within an inch or so even out past 400 yards um, so if you'll notice at a hundred yards the line of sight and the path of the bullet is at the peak height of that so if you set your rifle in at a hundred yards Everywhere you shoot that is not a hundred yards will be low. If you'll notice that at roughly 30 yards or so, the path of the bullet and the line of sight zero out, and then they do it again at 200 yards. So that's why I set my rifle in at 25 yards, and then it is an inch and three quarters high at a hundred yards and then back zero-ish at 200 yards and so on and so forth. Now I do this because I feel like an inch and three quarters high is never going to bother me or make me miss a deer, but being two inches low could if I misjudge how far the deer is or any number of things. The kill zone on a deer is about 12 inches by 12 inches and I've got a diagram here of kind of how I aim and you know the red line here is still kill zone but I am not trying to hit that part of the deer. The yellow part is you know a good spot to hit and the green is just ideal for me because that gives me the largest margin of error if something goes wrong I'm still in the kill zone. My wife and my daughter and myself all shoot a little bit throughout the year just to keep in practice that's a good idea for anybody that's planning on killing an animal but anyway I shot here last year right at 250 yards and I dropped him so I'm not saying again that the way that I set my scopes in is the best way or the perfect way but it definitely works for me of course anytime we're shooting we want to be safe I've got about 600 yards of area here pay no attention to those cows they're way out of the way and it may be hard to tell but the land that I'm sitting on right now goes downhill all the way back to that color change and then it starts going back uphill so and then there's trees behind that so no way that a bullet's going to get through all that also real quick notice that the overwhelming majority of you that watch my stuff are not subscribed and I'd like to tell you that I put out slightly more than mediocre content every other Monday if you don't want to miss that you need to click that subscribe button I don't use anything fancy here. I've just got a bath towel folded up to kind of prop on and then a piece of plywood on some saw horses. And I just try and get the gun to lay as comfortably as possible and on target without me having to force it on target. And that takes me out of the equation. So it's as accurate as possible. Another huge benefit to shooting at 25 yards is if you've got a scope, you can pretty much see any hole you shoot at 25 yards 
which may not be the case if you're setting your rifle in at 100. Now all my rifles were still on from last year so I did not have to adjust them but if you do it's very easy just unscrew the caps and most of them these days will have something you can turn with your hand like a turret or a thumb turn. Um, the older school style scopes had a spot that we used to use a dime. I don't know why we used to use a dime because the rim of a bullet fits in there and you can turn it with that. But anyway, they're usually marked how much each click is worth at a certain distance. So it's super easy. If you're shooting low, move the scope up. If you're shooting left, move the scope right. Pretty self-explanatory. I know this was a little different, but I hope y'all enjoyed it. And thanks for watching, guys.